It is my pleasure and privilege to join you at the World Continuity Congress Malaysia 2010 or WCC 2010. My commendation to BCM Institute for organizing the WCC 2010, making it the third time that it is held in Malaysia and the 12th WCC in the Asia Pacific region. I am pleased by the effort expounded by BCM Institute in proactively promoting the business continuity and disaster recovery of BCDR profession and education for professionals in the Asia Pacific region. The World Continuity Congress serves the objective of promoting the science and art of business continuity management of BCM and disaster recovery or DR in the Asia Pacific region, offering a gathering place for professionals in Malaysia to meet and share their ideas with the rest of the world and updating the business community with the latest trends and global best practices. Ladies and gentlemen, today we live in an interconnected world where common interests share common problems and risk to the continuity of businesses. Natural disasters, physical damage and cyber attacks are some of the common risks to business continuity. And when it happens, the flow of daily businesses becomes interrupted. This is why we share the responsibilities to resolve it and the need to implement BCM both at the public and the private sectors becomes pertinent. Bottom line is this, the reason why people do not embark on business continuity is, has two reasons. One is we are unbusy. The other reason is that I really don't have the skill. That's one of the biggest challenges. And if you give them enough knowledge, enough skill, where to find the resources, there's a good chance that this person or this agency can embark on it. The most important thing I'm going to highlight is this. The coming years, the most important we are seeing is outsourcing. DR outsourcing is going to be a trend. All of us heard about crowd computing. One of the things you will begin to see is crowd DR. Means the, using, the use of crowd computing as disaster recovery. Virtualization continues to be the big item that has been uh, facilitating our recovery. Uh, unified communication, voice over IP, the use of over internet will continue to drive us. Whether you like it or not, the, the, band, the, the, the internet will be a means of recovering and also a means of communicating in the event of disaster. But beware, bandwidth is limited during a disaster. Okay, last but not least is compliance to standard. DR has its own standard. All right, so there is a, it's being, we are being driven by the standard itself. Other things in, uh, in business continuity will be continued threat or terrorism. I think, in, I think we must not deny the fact that this is the biggest threat in, in every country now with uh, SME. Small and medium enterprise continues to be our biggest concern because 60% of any economy are, are SMEs. And one of the things we have learned, SMEs collapse first. Jocelyn, these are the days when losing your data is fatal to a business. These are the days when customers can't access you, even if it's only for a minute, that can be fatal to a business. So business continuity and disaster recovery and emergency management are extremely critical to businesses of all types, both large businesses and small businesses, schools, banks, you name it. Very important. That's a great question. As a matter of fact, uh, in the United States, uh, particularly financial and uh, finance institutions, their association uh, is recommending that they put their business continuity planning efforts page one on their website so that what they have planned to do in case of an emergency can be known to all of their customers. So it, yes, I think it's very important that organizations let their customers know that they are in fact resilient and that they will be there when they need them even if a disaster occurs. In the United States we have uh, the NFPA 1600 standard and there's a new version for 2010. 
and it's always been a very good standard for public emergency plans, but now they've included the business impact analysis and certain things from business. And I think that one of the best things you can do is, is allow the merger of emergency management and business continuity to occur in your company. For example, I do a great deal of training with companies, teaching their incident management teams how to use the incident command system. And they have found that to be a very welcome addition to the programs. Communication during an emergency is very difficult because the communication systems themselves may be down. So it's very important for employers to train their employees on how to respond in an emergency, how to evacuate the building, how to shelter in place, how to take care of their families, how to communicate with their families. If the building is destroyed and they're all out on the street, uh, how can they let their families know that they're safe, and those types of things. Uh, and those things require exercises and drills. And if, if a company doesn't exercise and drill their emergency plans or their business continuity plans, the employees will never understand what they are to do. They need to practice just like a football team. With natural disasters, uh, most of those are fairly predictable. We know that uh, we get warnings for a hurricane. Uh, we know if we live in an earthquake prone area, we don't get much warning, but we know we're in an earthquake prone area. I live in the northeast of the United States where we have ice storms and snowstorms, and so we get uh, warning that those things are coming. Uh, the best thing you can do is to, is to have each individual family put together their own family disaster preparedness plan. In any nation, if you think the government is going to save everybody, that's a big mistake. The government is capable and has lots of resources, but it can't save everybody. You must be able to take care of yourself. So one of the best things that people can do, the lesson I've learned almost everywhere I've been, is that the public needs to be educated as to how to care for themselves for maybe 72 hours after a disaster strikes. Before this, uh, especially in terms of how we mitigate natural disasters, we were not so well prepared uh, because we are such a blessed country, we are, we, it doesn't happen very often here. Uh, but having said that, looking at how things have been going um, these past few years, uh, where natural disasters are becoming quite common, uh, it happens uh, more, more often than before. So I, I think uh, the, the best way to, to mitigate in event it does happen is to be as prepared as you can be and uh, uh, first natural disasters and also of course with uh, um, any other kinds of disasters that's going to put a lot of uh, uh, people in harm's way. So, how, mm, how prepared is the businesses in Malaysia actually? Uh, I must say that um, uh, business, businesses depend on the government, I guess, to provide uh, some buffer or some protection against uh, things that would, would uh, have an impact on their profitability.